What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're finally gonna do the highly anticipated um, loader lift capacity video with my Kubota VX. I did a video about five months ago about the um, about increasing your lift capacity um, by increasing your relief valve pressure. And I talked in that video about doing a test with my crane scale to show a comparison between stock pressures and the pressure I was at now. Um, so today I'm finally gonna get that video done. I've had a lot of guys ask me since then if I had done that video or when I'm gonna do that video. So I'm finally gonna make it happen today and doing other videos and kind of feel bad that I haven't gotten it done. So, um, so the whole plan today is to figure out exactly where I'm at for pressure because it's been a while since I checked it. Um, so I'm gonna get this gauge on there. We'll see where I'm at. I wanna say I'm around 2000 PSI, uh, but I'm not 100% sure, so we'll check it. Um, as far as my baseline pressure that I wanna check for stock comparison, from what I hear, Kubota specs these tractors at about 1950 for the hydraulic pressure. But the problem with that is when you buy a Kubota BX new, very rarely does it actually come at 1950. Uh, most people report that theirs is at 1650, um, 1750, somewhere around 1800. Um, I personally know like four or five guys that I've seen on YouTube, theirs was at about 1750. I know another two guys, theirs was at like 1650. Mine was at 1650. Um, so for me to test it at 1950 and then do like my max capacity, which is like around 2000, I feel like it would be a much more fair comparison to do 1750 PSI versus, you know, around 2000 PSI. Um, just because that's where most people's tractors are set when they buy them new. So we're gonna test this out right now. We'll see where I'm at. I'm gonna remove the loader relief valve and I'm gonna turn it back down to about 1750 PSI. Um, we'll do our test. We'll see what the crane scale gives us and then um, I will bump it back up to around 2000 PSI and we will test it again. And then at the end, we'll figure out what the difference is and see what kind of power gains we get from doing this kind of mod. So let me get to it and uh, I'll set you guys up and we'll figure out what pressure I'm at right now and go from there. All right, guys, so to get a baseline pressure, I'm going to put my gauge on here. I already relieved the pressure with my joystick. We'll just take off this first coupler here, which should be loaded down. We'll pop our gauge on, just like that, and we'll get a baseline. Okay, well, as you guys seen there, it hit about 2,000 PSI, pretty much on the money, 2,000. Um, so now we know basically how far I can go because I have every shim in that I ever bought for this. All right, guys, well, it's a few minutes later, and uh, unfortunately, the weather took a turn for the worst. Good old Western New York. That beautiful day that I was telling you about, it's an absolute rainstorm. The wind started to pick up. Um, and shortly after it just started downpouring and hasn't stopped since my driveway is like a lake right now So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to go outside to do this, but I do have an idea So let me uh, get going on this idea. I don't recommend what I'm about to do But it's the only way I see me finishing this video today for you guys So I have a little plan here and we're gonna see if it's gonna work or not Let me get it set up and I'll get right back with you guys I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but it sure as hell is worth a try. I'd be surprised how well these things hold. I'm going into a floor joist that I knew was here. 
I might even end up using two of these. Because we're not pulling up fast, we're just slowly putting the pressure on it. <clears throat> and if it ends up getting ripped out, you guys will see it first. <clears throat> There's one. I have another one. We'll see if we need it, because if I have to, I'll do two. And then I'll hook the chain up to each one of them, but I'm hoping one will do it. Okay, so as you guys seen, I was able to find an eye bolt. Um, it was like the lag bolt style eye bolts. I threaded that into the stud on my floor, into the joist there. Seems to be holding. I just actually gave it a little bit of a test just to make sure it was gonna hold, and I think it's gonna hold. All it's gotta do is hold for a little bit here, a couple tests, and I'll take it back out of the floor, so hopefully it don't rip my shed floor out. Uh, but this is how I got it set up. There's the scale. Um, I will zero it out before I start the test. I got it coming off the chain, going up to the skid steer coupler. So I mount it this way. I feel like this will be the easiest way for me to do it. Um, I did watch, if you ever watch Neil Messick, um, he did a video on lift capacities. He had a Kubota BX2370 with the BX2380 loader like I do, which is actually kind of funny because it's the only other Kubota BX I've ever seen that actually has the uh, BX2380 loader aside from my own. So um, kind of an interesting video. I'll try to link that in the description if you guys want to watch his video, um, but he does a test very similar to this. Um, I got the skid steer coupler curled all the way back. Um, uh, let me just raise my loader here uh, to get the slack out of the chain and I'm going to take a measurement from the floor to the bottom of the skid steer coupler so you guys can have a, a distance in the height of the boom from where I did this test at. Um, that way if you guys wanted to try this on your own to see what your own tractor can do at this height, um, you can do it because if you don't do it at the same height, it's going to give you different results because of the geometry of the loader, the way it comes up. Um, so the farther up you go, the farther out the load gets from the front of the tractor and the less leverage you have. So the higher you go, the less leverage you have, the less you're going to lift. The lower down you are, the more weight you're going to be able to lift because you have more leverage. So um, let me get that measurement for you guys and uh, I'll be right back with you. All right, so as you guys can see there from the floor, I'm roughly 40 inches, um, maybe a little bit under, so I'm, I'm roughly 39 and 7 eighths from the very bottom of the skid steer coupler. You can see what mount I'm referring to. Okay, so if you guys ever want to do this test on your own, uh, bring your loader to that exact same mark, and if you have a crane scale, you'll be able to do this test yourself and kind of compare it to my test, which is kind of nice to do. As a lot of people do loader lift test videos and they don't specify how high off the ground they're doing the test. Um, you know, they just tell you how much weight they're lifting. Well, if you don't know how high it is, it gives you really no reference point because, you know, like I said, it all changes. So it's good to know where they're starting to test at. Let me take out the um, relief valve and lower the pressure down to about 1750 and we'll test it and make sure I'm at 1750 and then, uh, and then we'll see what this thing can lift at that pressure. Doing this with the three-point hitch down, it's a lot easier to do it when you have it up. But I didn't feel like starting the tractor back up again. Okay, so we got it out. Let me uh, move some shims and we'll see where we're at for pressure. Generally, it's about 50 pounds per tenth. Okay, so a .4 shim would give you about 200 pounds of pressure. Um, so that's kind of like a rough estimate way to do it. So I'm going to want to take out about 0.3 of a shim to get me to where I want to be. Okay guys, so I ended up taking out one of the largest shims I had in there, as well as one of the smallest shims that I had in there. I think I had like four or five shims total. So now we're going to get it back in there and see what kind of pressure I'm at. Alright, let's see what kind of pressure we got.
right, 1750 on the dot, so that's good. Okay guys, so as you've seen, we are exactly at 1750, which is good because typically when you're buying a brand new Kubota BX, that's about where you're gonna get it at, about 1750, maybe plus or minus 50 PSI. So this is a really good uh, base starting point to do our lift capacity test with. So let's, um, let's make sure everything's rigged up in the front and uh, we'll do our first pull and see what kind of pounds we left here. Okay, so now that I pulled out the slack, make sure my chain is good. I'll get you guys down here where you can see the scale. Okay, I got the camera all set up. We're at 1750 PSI. We'll do a pull and see what we get. Like it was 900 and something we'll take a look real quick and see what it was all right so that was about 930 pounds that was with the skid steer coupler being about 40 inches off the ground so that was pretty good now remember this is at the pivot pin you know i have the where i had the chain i had the chain on the skid steer coupler so this is basically measuring if you look at the pivot pin we're pretty much right in line with the pivot pin this isn't a test of how much you can lift in the bucket you know this is just a test seeing what kind of uh what kind of power differences we have between the stock relief valve pressure and a modified relief valve pressure. So now I'm gonna put my shims back in it and we'll get it back up to 2000 PSI. I'll verify with you guys that it's at 2000 PSI and then I'll put you guys in front of the scale again and we can see how much of a difference we got. Okay, so I got the gauge back on there. Now we'll see uh, if I'm back at 2000 again. I got all my shims back in place, so we should be good. back exactly at 2000 psi i'll get you guys set back up in front of the scale and uh we'll do our last test here Make sure we're still at uh, 40 inches here. Yep, so nothing's moved. Get you guys set back up and we should be good. Okay, so we're set back up. I'm gonna clear out the scale. Okay. Just making sure we're zero back out. All right, let me do the last pull here. All right guys, so I just looked at the footage and it looked like we got 1,080 pounds on that last pull, um, which was at 2,000 PSI for our relief pressure. Um, so I ran some numbers real quick and this is what I come up with. Okay, so at 1750 PSI, we lifted 930 pounds um, and that was with the boom 40 inches in the air from the bottom of the skid steer plate at the pivot pin, okay? And then at the same measurements with the relief set at 2,000 PSI, we lifted at 1,080 pounds. So in total, that's a 150 pound increase, which really isn't bad. A lot of people think that every 100 PSI of um, loader pressure gives you 100, 100 pounds more you can lift. And it's close, but it's not quite exactly. Um, I did some math here. 
So basically for every 250 PSI of increase, you get 150 pounds more that you're able to lift. I divided both these numbers in half just to work with some smaller numbers. And that equals out to every 125 PSI of loader increase will gain you about 75 pounds of lift capacity. Um, so, you know, it's not quite perfect, but it's not, it's really not bad. I mean, that's a pretty good gain. Um, so just, you know, some things to keep in mind when you're doing this, like I said before, um, with the shims, every 10th is about 40 to 50 PSI. So if you're trying to figure it out without, you know, throwing a shim in and checking it 15 times, you know, this will get you close. So just remember that if you got, you know, 40,000 shim, that'll get you around, you know, 180 to 200 um, PSI of an increase. And we know from that, 250 PSI will get you about 150 pounds of an increase. Uh, this should be the same for all Kubota BXs. It's not going to be the same for like a John Deere because the cylinder sizes are different. Uh, the hydraulic pumps are different. But for every Kubota BX out there, this should pretty much be the general rule of thumb, um, which is the whole reason I wanted to do this test. Because I had always wondered myself, you know, at what PSI of an increase gains me what for how much lift capacity I have. You know, you can guess all you want, but until you actually test it, uh, you really don't know. So anyway, I hope this helps you guys out. Hopefully this uh, gives you guys a little bit more clue of how much of a hydraulic pressure increase will gain you what for performance um, and lift capacity. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Uh, for anybody who wants to do this test on their own, uh, I highly recommend you don't do what I did <laughs> by putting an eye loop in the floor of your uh, shed. But on um, this scale right here, um, you can buy this off eBay. I want to say I paid like 45 bucks for it or something like that. And it only goes up to 1,200 pounds, um, which was one of the reasons that I actually had to lift the loader as high as I did because I started off down by the ground, but I was quickly maxing out the, um, the scale. So I did a couple tests, and as I brought the loader up, obviously with your leverage decreasing, um, I was able to get it to a point where I didn't max my scale out so I can give us an accurate test for this video. So I settled up here, which was putting me right at the end of the scale. Um, on the high end, like I said, we ended at 1,080 and the scale maxes out at 1,200. So we we're really close to the end of the, the limits of the scale. Um, but that's a scale if you guys want to pick it up. They're handy to have around. Um, when I had a really heavy set of pallet forks, I wanted to see what they weighed. Um, I actually weighed them with this. They were like 325 pounds. And I actually used them on a Kubota BX. I used them for like a year. And, you know, it did the job, but... Was I limited on what I could lift? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, they did the job. I ended up getting rid of them. But, um, yeah, it's, it's great to have around the house. If you want to see how much a log weighs, if you want to see how much a pallet weighs, they're just handy to have around. And for $35, $40, bucks, they are really great to have. And uh, it seems to be really accurate to me. I did test it out before the video, and uh, it, it, it was pretty much spot on with the scale in my house. Um, so, should be all set, guys. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And, um... If there's any other videos like this I can do for you guys, if you want me to test in a different way, uh, let me know. And I'll try to make it, you know, a little bit quicker this time. I felt bad because a lot of guys want to see this video and it took me six months, five months to get it out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. I wonder how many of you guys lost faith in me when you see me threading this thing into my floorboard. As Zip Tie says, you don't need floorboards. <laughs>